When I chase people in New York, they used to throw the guns away. We chase people here in Chicago, they keep the guns and they turn on our officers. That sense of futility isn't broad in Chicago, it's concentrated. This map shows where the shootings took place. Now note that they're concentrated on Chicago's south and west sides. If you live in the more affluent north side of Chicago, it's possible you don't even think about gun crime because it hardly ever happens where you live. Although this weekend, four shootings did, including one not far from the mayor's residence. Chicago leaders blame their homicide problem on gangs and on illegal guns. Police confiscate thousands of illegal guns every year. And in May, the city council voted unanimously to toughen the city's gun laws even more, including strengthening an assault weapons ban. According to the city, from 2009 to 2013, 60% of the guns used to commit crimes in Chicago were originally bought out of state, mainly in Indiana, Mississippi, and Wisconsin. Three of the top four sources for guns recovered in Chicago were gun dealers in Illinois cities near Chicago. This comes as Chicago's murder rate is actually down from a record 500 plus homicides in 2012 and 440 last year. And Chicago isn't even the nation's most violent city. On a per capita basis, that dubious honor goes to Detroit and New Orleans. This is what 82 people looks like. And that is in just three days in Chicago, including the 16 people who died. This is what the epidemic, if it begins to go up, this is what the epidemic looks like. And what are we doing about this epidemic? Anything at all? Well, right now in Congress, Senate Republicans are floating an amendment to a federal lands hunting bill that, among other things, would make it easier to transport guns across state lines, which straw buyers in Chicago and around the country would probably thank them for. We're actually not doing anything to reduce gun violence in America. Nothing. So this death toll is only going to get worse.